Hi everybody, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. So today I'm gonna to start a little series. This is the first of three, so the next two will come in the next couple of days. It's gonna be mm, kind of on more artsy cards. All of the stamp sets that I'm gonna use have the same kind of feel to them, and it's a way, sometimes when we see a stamp set like this, like I love this stamp set, I love the way it looks, but it can be a little bit tricky to use. So all three of the ones that we're gonna use over the next um, series of videos will be this, uh, I don't even know what to call it because it's a distinctive. I don't know that they're all distinctive, but it, sometimes it's a little bit of a trick to get the ink on and to look just the way you want it. So these cards will all be a little bit more artsy. You can pick and choose parts of the different ones and mush them all together at the end if you want. But today I'm gonna use the olive branch and the dry brush. So those are what we're gonna use um, today. And then I may come back and use the dry brush with something else, I may switch it around. There's no cut and emboss machine today, but that doesn't mean that there won't be in the future. Like I said, it's more of mixing techniques. So what I do today will be a jumping off point for the next one. And I'll probably remove a couple of things. And you'll kind of, by the end, you'll understand what I meant. It's really hard to explain what I wanna do with it. So I am going to use a piece of Blackberry Bliss cardstock for our card base. And then this is a piece of Shimmer White. It's cut a little bit smaller. Um, it's not quite four. And the reason I did that was because on the other one, I was gonna put ribbon on it. And then when I, there's just something about stamping in the middle. And so when I stamped it in the middle, it was not the right size. Then so I had to peel it off my card and move it over. So this time I just went ahead and cut it a little bit smaller. Um, so it would be the right size that I was working with. So I'm gonna take my Stamparatus. Again, may use the Stamparatus. I'll probably use it because it does come in handy when you're inking up these different stamps. And then we're gonna use the Olive Brush. And then I am going to use the Blackberry Bliss. This was, you know, I designed the card and this is one of those cards where I did not want to use what I had made the first time. But when I did it, there was no place left to put the sentiment. So I'll show you what I did to the sentiment on the other one. But this time, I just want to make sure I get it on here. And I really like the words in this set. They're kind of different. And it's also great for a sympathy card. It says, may your heart begin to heal. And then we'll need this blackberry in a second. I've already got it on my table. It's a really strong ink color. So I have my stamp here. I did wash it with wet wipes because in a minute you're gonna see there's a lot of ink on it. And I didn't wanna get my chamois. I've just cleaned them and I didn't wanna get them all dirty. So I'm gonna lay this on here. It may go off the edge of my card. Like I said, I kind of redesigned the card after I made it. But usually there's a lot more rubber on this side. If you're doing it with a the photopolymer, then it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna lay this on here and I'm gonna pick it up with my stamp. Now everything's where it needs to be. My sentiment's already on, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm trying to squish it on. I spent more time probably trying to fit the words on the front because I wanted them on the front than I did actually making the card. So we are going to start with our, let's do our olives first. And if you've been to um, Italy or any place where they grow olives or make olive oil and have done a little bit of touring, you know that they come in different colors. Obviously there's black and there's green and I'm doing them kind of blackberry-ish more for art's sake, but you know, they might not all be all the way ripe. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of so saffron and then we'll take that off. We're just gonna kind of build color. This one's probably gonna look a little bit different than my first one because I kind of switched colors up a little bit. So you can see it's not a lot, right? And so saffron is a very light color. So now I can kind of decide which ones I maybe want a little bit more. So let's, I don't want all of them to look not right. So let's just get these two. And I'm getting it on the leaves, but so saffron, again, very light color. This is a fun technique. Like if it's one of the ones that if you want to play, because you like to stamp and you don't just want to make cards to give away, but because you like, you know, as a child, you liked coloring. So now we have two that are a little bit darker. Now let's go over and get, uh, I'm gonna do my soft suede now. And that's for the stems. And some of them will end up not having um, soft suede because they'll just get covered up by the other colors, but it will have a, a tint of it. So just add, wherever you see stem, just kind of add it. And you can see again, getting on the leaves and there's not a ton, 
of little stems in here. You could use a marker if you want, or you could use a sponge dauber, which we may do some of that on the other cards. This is just one technique, so you don't have to have everything in the world. This card already has a lot. So just kind of draw it on there. And if it's not dark enough the first time, we'll just add a, a little bit more. Because again, soft suede, when you sponge it on, is not the darkest color in the world. So you can see now we have some stem. The stem right here is probably missing a little bit. And they will pick up some. Of course, this is my challenge when I use it's this one. When I use the Stamparata, sometimes I flip it back over and I'm like, I don't know which one I'm looking at anymore. But if some of our leaves get some brown in them, that's okay. Again, it's kind of art. And before I made this, I just did a Google search and I put in olive branch and then searched images. So you can do that too to get an idea for your colors. So now we've got that. I'm gonna end with the blackberry because it's the darkest color. Now I'm gonna go to soft succulent. And this time we'll get pretty much all of our leaves because it's the lighter color. And then in a minute, when we add some shaded spruce, we won't put it everywhere. Again, you could use your sponge daubers to do this. I kind of changed the card as I was going. And I know a lot of you now have these blending brushes. What you wanna be careful of is it is catching the edges because this is a big a big way to put it on here. So you can see on here, so when you go in a second to stamp with this, you don't wanna press super, super hard. Otherwise you'll put those on there even though you're using your Stamparatus. And that's part of the reason we use a Stamparatus is to get perfect images. And you can see I'm getting it on the olives, but again, the blackberry is gonna be our darkest color. So see, you don't wanna press so hard, just kinda of go there in the middle. I know some of you have the little tool that does it. You'll wanna be careful if you do that because it can press it a little hard. I just like using my finger, but you can get, or you can even make one. So now you can see this leaf right here. It may just be that I didn't press on it. No, it doesn't have any ink, so let's add some ink. And then we'll press a little harder. There we go. So now we have a pretty good coating of the soft succulent. This time I'm gonna try to go a little bit lighter on my shaded spruce than I did the first time I made it. Get a little bit of my soft succulent out of my, oops, I was just gonna go straight to my card. This time I'm gonna just try to get some tips and some sides. If I don't get all of them, that's okay, because now we're going for some shading. I would tell you what the other two stamp sets are that I plan on using, um, but I haven't made the cards. And so on the off chance that I can't get it to work, I don't wanna have you think, oh, that's what she's gonna do. And then you show back up and be like, you never even used the stamp set you said you were going to. So that looks pretty good. It does look a lot better than my first one. My other one ended up getting too much of the spruce because the first time you make a card, that can happen. Now, if you're doing it at home, I would suggest that perhaps you not use um, shimmery white paper because it's not our cheapest paper. And I could have practiced on something else, but I didn't realize that I was gonna kind of switch up my technique. So here we are gonna go, this one and this one, I'm gonna not add as much of the blackberry because those are the ones I want to look a little bit not ripe. And again, it's gonna get a little bit of the leaves will have some blackberry on them. So if you want, go ahead and use a sponge dauber just for this part if you have them. But I'm okay with the color. And if, I, if we need to, if anything's too incredibly blackberry, we'll just put spruce right over the top of it and it'll make a new shade of green. Okay, again, I didn't get this one right here. I'm not pressing on these very hard. There we go. Now, I want it to have just a tad bit more here. So I'll press a little harder. That got it. And then I think I probably need to add a little bit more up there. That looks pretty good. This here has a glow of yellow around it, the saffron, because I just happened to get the leaves. So I'm going to do this. This will be the last little step. 
a little bit more of the black right oh that looks good and then right here i'm going to try to get that so it doesn't look so yellow on my leaves so this is these leaves right here and you can see some of our staff our suede has say, stayed it is this double batch i think And there's not a ton of green left on here now, so it's, it will be a little bit lighter. There we go. So super easy. Now, this is where I would normally use my chamois on most cards, and I may on one of the ones that we have coming up. But there's a lot of ink on here, and I'm not a big proponent, proponent of using wet wipes on your stuff. But... The reason I'm going to, I'll tell you, because for one, it, it can leave little fibers. For two, it smells like dirty diapers to me. And my daughter is 28. But you know, some smells just never leave you. Um, but you want to be careful that you don't pull it because it does um, leave fibers. As, and I wouldn't use it at all on my photopolymer. But I need to not move this because I want it to all stay where it is. And if I take it off to wash it in the sink, which would be the method I would prefer, then it, because you can see it's still coming off. And I'm going to use my Versamark pad. And I should have gone and gotten like a used one, but I used the one that is, you know, still fairly white. It's not as white anymore after I did this because no matter how clean you think you got that, there's usually some ink of those dark colors lingering in there. When you have spruce and blackberry, you can bet that it's going to be on here. So now I'm going to take my Versamark and you don't want to move any of this, but we're going to make this tab because, you know, I said we're doing artsy. So you could stop. You most certainly do not have to do this step, but I want artsy and this adds to the arty feel for it. And I hope that you'll be able to see it in the camera. And we're just going to add that layer of Versamark right over the top. I'm going to need that again in a second because we're doing artsy. So we have this. I have my new um, embossing tray. I can't remember what the name of it's called, but it's a whole little kit. I'm going to grab my tweezers. For one, it's kind of hard to get this up off of here. There we go. And now I'm going to make sure I get the right one because I have two powders sitting here. I'm going to use my clear. And if it doesn't stick to all of it, like if you didn't get Versamark everywhere, remember we're going artsy. So some of it will be shiny and some of it won't. So don't worry about that. Um, you have a while to work with it. So you can tell how pretty this is. Let's heat this up. I'm going to start from the bottom just because it's, I don't want it to blow everywhere. Once I can see that it's melting, I know my gun's hot. And then I can move it up here. Now for this one, it's important that you get all of those tips of your leaves. Although it's not as important when you do the clear on top of color because if it rubs off, you're still going to have your stamped image. This just gives a nice artsy feel to it. And it really pops those colors. So then tilt it around to make sure you got everywhere. It should all be shiny. That tip right there, I didn't have at all. Maybe that one not either. Nope. Now you need to stop before you go too long. Otherwise, that nice raised up thing we got goes flat. So, isn't that pretty? So you could stop, but this could be your card. You don't have to keep going. I'm just going to show you a couple of other techniques. Then you take this. I won't have you watch me put it all back in here. If you were making more than one of these cards, I would do all this step so you don't have to keep cleaning out your embossing tray. I'm just going to, this has a little cap and I've taken the cap off and just brush all this back in here. Okay, now we have a couple of more steps that we want to do for this. You do want to make sure that you wipe, um, clean that off before you put more ink on it. That one you could take out and do in the sink. So now I'm going to take my dry brush stamp. And again, I after I looked at the Google images, there are tons of paintings out there of olive branches. And they looked like they were on canvas. 
I'm kind of old and rustic and I must, I sometimes I just get the urge to go to Italy so bad it is not good. And now we could, like I could. <laughs> Cause now nobody's saying I have to stay at home anymore. So I'm just gonna ink this. I'm just gonna do it right in my, in my tray or the stamp case. Cause I don't care that it gets everywhere. Cause I'm just gonna kind of lay this back on here. I just don't want any of those lines that sometimes we get. So got that. And then I'm just gonna kind of press this on here. So you can see where it's getting it, but I don't want it to be super, like one place is like, oh, that has some dry brush. So you can help that by just putting some pressure where you want it. It's not gonna stick to our olives because they have the embossing. So if it if they get dirty, you can just wipe them right back off. I'm trying to get places that still have some of the darker ink and some of the edges. We're going for rustic and old. It looks pretty good. I might get a little bit more right here. The main thing is you can see I stamped my thing crooked and so I just flipped it over. Two sides to every sheet of paper. So that looks pretty good, huh? It's got that. Then this, again, you can just take that to the sink and rinse it off when you're done. And I use my background stamps in here a lot. It just is a little bit easier. It takes a little bit less space on your table. Now we are going to need our Versamark again. Now, if it was you and you have a, a brand new beautiful Versamark, I would let it sit for just a second because this is going to get a little bit more ink on it. Now, I don't want to cover up my words. And I don't want it to be everywhere. So just kind of the same thing I just did with look my beautiful clean-ish stamp is not so clean anymore. So just kind of, you're not going to really be able to see so much where it goes, but that's okay. We just kind of want some on the edges. And I don't want it everywhere. See if I can get it on here. Not getting it on the words or on my olives. You can get a little bit on your olives, but I don't want a lot of it. So I have that. This time I'm going to take my heat and stick powder. Grab this again. And my tray. Oops. I'm bad about leaving that in there, which kind of defeats the purpose then. And because I don't, I can kind of see in the light, it's a sunny day, but the sun's not coming in my office real great at the moment. So since I don't know where it's got stuff on it, I'm just gonna pour it on the whole card because now that I have my little tray, I can put it back in there. So now you need to heat this. So you don't want it with the heat and stick powder, you want it just till it is clear and then no more. Cause if you go past that clear and no more, then it's, it's just heat, it's just powder. There's no stick left to it and you wanna make sure that you have some stick. So get your gun hot. Mine is already a little bit hot because I just used it. And then find a tilt of your light where you can see powder and where you can see, be able to see it go clear. Now this one's gonna help because I can already see the clear on my olives. So I kind of know what I'm going for. Do it on top, because again, you just have a second. And then where my light is, I can see when it melts. It really is something that takes a tiny bit of practice. But on this one, if you're doing, I would not start using this on, we've had it for a while, and I wouldn't use it first off on something where you've stamped in Versamark and you want the pattern to be um, kept. And now I can feel where it's sticky. And then I just have, this originally was two jars of our stuff. I've used it and used it and used it and used it. Um, but it's just a convenient way to kind of keep it in here. So just have the sponge that I keep in here and I'm just going to add it. And again, I don't even remember exactly where I put it. So try. last time I got it all over the back of my card because I laid it right, kind of clean out of uh, space. It kind of goes everywhere, but it's beautiful. I don't think I put a lot over here because on this card, I know I'm going to put ribbon there. My first time I put it there. I can feel it sticky up there where I was touching my hand. 
And where a little bit of it fell into my olives and I didn't take it off, they just have a little bit of glimmer to them. And then just wipe it off. Now you wanna wipe it, not like scrub it, but you don't want it falling off on whoever you're gonna give it to, right? Um, especially since I made this a sympathy card, I don't want them to read the sympathy and then come off looking like they just went to, oops. I think that's beautiful. Super, super pretty. We're almost done because there's no die cutting on this card. I'm going to take the rib. The, this is on the inside. Now, if I was going to finish the card off total and this video wasn't already 5,000 steps, I would cut a piece of vanilla or white and put it on the inside and then stamp this with some more words because it's easier to see on the inside. But I'm not going to do that because you know how to stamp one image. But this is out of the annual catalog. It's our natural finish ribbon. So it's... Um, Kind of a fatter ribbon. Put that there. Sometimes my niece has been here cutting die cuts for my triad class, so all of my embossing machines are downstairs. I have more room on my desk than I normally have, and it's also one of the reasons that we're not die cutting anything on this card. So I'm going to use my Sahara sand, and this is the other set of olive, the olive branch out of the. Um, stamp set. So when you stamp onto anything ribbon, um, anything that's a little bit more porous than paper, just give it a second longer. And then make sure this time I go the other way. That time, that way it just gives it time to sink into the, the surface. So now we have some decorated ribbon. You can do that with a lot of the ribbons. This one's just nice because it's a little bit larger, so it's easy to see. So grab my Blackberry Bliss. There is gold kind of all over my table. A couple of things. Celebration is on right now. Um, I have a lot of different... Um, every month I do thank you gifts with my host code. So every month you can get something from me if you purchase online from my um, website, if you use the host code. But in July and August, Stampin' Up's giving you something for every 50 and $100. So if you spend $200, you can get four things or two things. Um, the note cards that I have been using have sold out. I did get them in time. If you're in club, don't worry. I ordered them in time before they have sold out. Things are while supplies last. So if there's something that you desperately want, I recommend not waiting. So I was torn on the ribbon because, you know, having it a little frayed goes with our rustic look. So the other one I have cut more flat. This ribbon would really probably have to be wrapped around if you don't want it to ever fray. So we're just gonna go with the fray. So just pull a little bit out there and once you have it then just cut those off but it kind of gives it a more of a finished look the intentional fraying than the non-intentional then um, on the other one I have used the pearl basic jewels I'm gonna switch on this one just to see which you like better if you don't have them then you can switch something else I'm going to use the um, red and green adhesive backed pearls out of the holiday catalog. I don't think they're called that in the holiday catalog. I'm going to use the gold ones because when I ordered them, I was looking for red and green and it seems like maybe they were called festive. So maybe the package name has, I'm going to do the gold ones on this card. Originally, I had other things that I, I was using gold ribbon. Like I said, this card went through some transformations. So I put the pearls on there and then I thought I should have used the gold ones. They were sitting here and you could even practically use the green ones. You want the card to be pretty and you know if you have somebody who's going through cancer treatments it's not so much a sympathy card this one because it's a little it's not a happy card but it's got that little a tiny bit of bling to it <coughs> <coughs> but if there's somebody that you're trying to cheer up who's been through a hard time this is the person you give that card to so let me show you what I did differently on the other one because you could do different things. You can see where it had a bit too much of the Blackberry. 
looks better with more yellow, right? And not so blackberry. And then this one had more of the gold. And then I realized there was not, if you do too much of the gold, which you can, but then my dry brush was covered up. So you can do just the dry brush. You can do just the gold. You don't have to do both, but you know, it's beautiful. And then here are the other pearls, which I think it lost with the gold. I think this stands, stands out a little bit better. Then on this one, because I didn't put my words on, I uh, the white was too white for shimmer white and the vanilla was too vanilla. So I embossed them with, I stamped it in Blackberry on the pearlescent paper and then heated it with clear, which I like that part, but I didn't like having to cut it out. And there wasn't really any place on here for a long, this long straight thing if you don't do it first because it was gonna cover up something. And remember, I told you I had to pull it off my card. So got a little bit of that. Now the whole thing would be kind of pretty if you have one like the settle or the canvas or one of those um, embossing folders that we don't carry right now. You could put it through there. It might crack a little bit of your embossing, but that's okay. I would do it before you put the um, gold leafing on because it will stick to your thing. But there is card one. So come back and we will um, kind of art up some of the other ones that you may be like, I don't know how to ink that to make it beautiful. So thanks for watching and make sure you're on my email list so you know everything that's going on. Have a great one. Bye.